What do you do when your new Tomb Raider animation is so dreadful that it doesn't even manage to scrape together the world famous IGN 7? Welcome back to Words Paradise, I'm your host Leon Idol, and yes, let's just take a moment to look at this and appreciate this. I IGN is such a funny company. Concord, 7 out of 10. Star Wars Outlaws, 7 out of 10. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, 7 out of 10. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, this was Concord, so this first one was, uh, right, right, my bad, Starfield, 7 out of 10. Uh, let's not forget, of course, they've got Skull and Bones, 7 out of 10. When it comes to TV, they gave the new Dragon Ball Dime up first episode, 7 out of 10. And yet, Tomb Raider The Legend of Lara Croft, 5. It got a, this show was tailor-made for the most unabashed left-leaning political ideologues that tried to usurp and co-op Tomb Raider and gaming culture as a whole. And IGN has exacerbated that for the last God knows how many years. And even they were like, yeah, we, we, gotta, we gotta give this one a five, bro. This is, sorry, I can't say bro, that's gendered language, but we gotta give this a five, people. That's where, that is how bad this show is. So uh, we're gonna get into this article, and actually a couple articles. Before we do, hit that subscribe button. I have a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Five, mediocre, a, a five, but it's not just IGN. That's the funny part. Because if it was just IGN, I'd chalk it up to, okay, Ryan McCaffrey here got, you know, may maybe has a good take now and again. He stores for IGN. Because he says, Tomb Raider The Legend of Lara Croft isn't terrible, but it's well below the high bar set by other animated video game adaptations on Netflix. Now, that is a fine takeaway. I've never seen the show. I'm not going to see the show. I know everything I need to know about the show via the discourse on the internet and everything they've uh, you know, stated about it leading up to the release of this project. However, even Kotaku gave this a bad review. Tomb Raider The Legend of Lara Croft traps the heroine inside her most boring adventure, yet Netflix's latest game adaptation has a stunning lead performance but is plagued by poor pacing. So, uh, yeah, let's read through here, because I've only read this first paragraph, and, uh, yo, it's a doozy. I, I don't know too much about this article, uh, Will or Row. Let's go ahead and just take a look. What, what, what do we know about Will or Row? Uh, let's see. Will or Row, they got, they got their picture taken out. Let's, let's check them out on X. I'm blocked? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't even know who you are. Why am I blocked? I mean, okay. I've done a... The live shit talking on you, know, Alyssa and, and, and Carolyn Petit and stuff like that. So, um, I guess it makes sense. But I didn't even know you worked for, for Kotaku. I know who you are. So, okay, well, that adds an interesting little saga to this story. Well, let's see what, uh, I guess, turns out one of my haters uh, has to say about this atrocious adaptation. With nearly three decades worth of games, movies, and more to pull from, starring one of gaming's most recognizable heroines, you'd think a TV show based on the Tomb Raider franchise would be a sure hit. No, no, no. I never at any point, and nobody at any point, ever thought this was going to be a hit. However, what we did think was that you would glaze it and inflate the numbers and try and, try and make it look like a hit when it actually wasn't. The fact that you aren't doing this is... So incredibly surprising. How bad can it truly be that even IG and Kotaku were like, this one ain't it. Yet Netflix, the streaming giant responsible for powerhouse game adaptations like Castlevania series and Arcane, Arcane, which was amazing, by the way, can't seem to strike gold with Tomb Raider, The Legend of Lara Croft. The new animated series is plagued by a shallow plot uninteresting characters, a disappointing lack of adventure. While the show's portrayal of the iconic hero Lara herself is its saving grace, there's nothing else of interest that surrounds her, and I'm gonna be willing to bet that even Lara is entirely out of character. There is nothing going for us in terms of getting the real Lara Croft, because uh, when I've read a couple of articles on this in the past, Every single one of them just want to talk about the feminist icon angle. When let's be real, Lara is far more than that. And they have been slowly but surely destroying the character of Lara Croft ever since the Square Enix reboots in like, what, 2013 or whatever that was. So no, I, I guarantee you there's no original Lara in this, even if you want to claim there is. There's maybe 2013 and onward Lara, which isn't Lara. It leaves the legend of Lara Croft uh, feeling less like a treasure worthy of such a character and more like a cheap imitation of the real thing. Again... 
I wonder what uh, Miss Blocky Block here considers the real thing. Uh, ever since the most recent reboot... Uh, okay, here it is. The most recent reboot of the Term Ra Tomb Raider games. That's... We know... I knew... I absolutely knew this is the route they were going to go. Ended in 2018 with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The world has been woefully devoid of new Lara Croft adventures. The... Yeah, because those games are bad. Maybe you can give credence to the first one and say this is a young Lara Croft. She's becoming who we know her as in the OG games. Uh, but that's not where they end up taking the story, so retroa retroactively, fuck that first one as well. Um, the world has been woefully devoid of new Lara Croft adventures. The Netflix series sought to remedy that by picking up where the reboot trilogy left off, reintroducing audiences to the same version of Lara, voiced this time around by Haley Atwell. She's a survivor with a well-established history of fighting for her life in addition to globe-trotting explorer. Uh, also, from what I've heard, uh, she has very much a it belongs in a museum complex instead of just being an adrenaline junkie who steals shit for the fun of it. No, no, she's got herself a heart of gold now. Though if you don't have any familiarity with the games that take place prior to the Netflix show, don't worry, the show has you covered. Perhaps too much. Oh my goodness. I, again, I'm, I'm happy the Kotaku is... You know, calling out this shitty show, uh, but also, why are they doing it? Like, wh what incentive do they have to talk about how bad this show is, unless, uh, 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 unless they are trying to, uh, you know, feign ignorance? Like, I don't know. We're in this weird position where every now and again, and I've called them out when they've been good, but every now and again, we've gotten some good Kotaku articles, and it's always wild. Even Alyssa Mercante had one good Kotaku article about a month or so ago. Now, it was a very obvious sort of article. It was one that everyone and their grandmother was thinking about. It was about how stupid the PS5 Pro is. But you know what? Broken clocks twice a day. Point is, Kotaku has been doing, for whatever reason, doing their damnedest to make sure that for every 30 terrible takes they've got, they've got one that we can, you know, say, oh, hey, this is a pretty good take, as if that's going to, to, to rectify, again, the 30 previous prior articles that are absolute dog shit from the day before. One of the immediate pitfalls of The Legend of Lara Croft is its insistence on retreading the events and the emotional struggles Lara went through in the games. It's intended to make the show an easier entry for point for new fans, but it's handled in a way that leaves people who have played the games feeling like Lara's character has regressed for no reason. Lara can't escape the guilt she feels over the death of her mentor, Conrad Roth, and this is a plot point we see in the first game and in the, uh, in the reboot trilogy, and it's central to her character development of the title. Furthermore, Lara isn't comfortable living in her home of Croft Manor as she still sees her dead father's home. We didn't have a Lara Croft with daddy issues in the original. I mean, okay, not not to the extent... Yeah, you could probably like read in some stuff there, but it, it was more the, the, the daddy issues, if you want to say she had them, is what made her a badass. She was like uh, internalizing stuff. She was going out. She was adventuring. Again, adrenaline junkie, running around with guns, being an overall kind of shitty person because... I mean, that was cool and edgy in the 90s, and that's the sort of character that we don't really get anymore. Uh, this is just, this is pitiful. It's pathetic. Uh, this is the representation of her inability to let go of her father's legacy and accept her own responsibilities, something players have already helped her through in 2015's Rise of the Tomb Raider. So much of the legend of Lara Croft's runtime is devoted to these two internal struggles, and even showing flashbacks of Roth's death multiple times. Falling back on old plot lines is the only symptom of a larger problem the Legend of Lara Croft faces. It is a wholly uninteresting plot. They're about to sum it up. I have no idea what this show's about. I've never once read. Okay, all, I, I, I've read snippets, I've read reviews, I, I've, I've read articles about the show prior to it coming out. We are about to learn in real time what this show is actually about, because I have no idea. To sum it up, Lara has to stop a man named Charles Devereaux, played by Richard Armitage, from collecting some MacGuffins, plot devices of no real importance, that will let him reshape the world in his image. The show tries to make Devereaux a compelling antagonist by sprinkling in some childhood trauma and suggests that he might have altruistic reasons for his mission, but ultimately reduces him to a one-dimensional villain by the season's conclusion. Armitage does the best he can with his script, but there's only so much even a talented actor like himself can do. And he looks like just generic western anime wannabe character. The character. I, I, there's That description was, Laura gotta stop a bad guy. I thought it was called Tomb Raider. Shouldn't, shouldn't the description be 
Lero wants to raid tombs. I mean, it, it's not hard. You can do episodic television. Devil May Cry has already done this. Watch the original Devil May Cry anime from 2007, and it's mostly episodic. It has an overarching story that does eventually lead into the third game, but in general, it's episodic because we as fans want to see one thing. Dante existing purely on the rule of cool. Lara could be the same, but they're so obsessed with making her some deep, poignant character. That it's, it's, I'm not even going to read the rest of this article. We already know what it is. We already know that IGN, Kotaku, they talk shit. They talk shit because this product was truly that bad. But where I have not seen a single person, I have not seen a single green-haired land whale on X defend this animation. It has been mum. It has been peep. It has been quiet. So that leads me to believe that the 5 that IGN gave it is actually more like a 2, and they are doing their damnedest to be generous. Same with Kotaku when they say, at least Lara Croft's character is still there. If that's the nicest thing you can say about it, and we know this isn't even the real Lara Croft's character, holy shit, what... What were we getting ourselves into, and does anybody besides me have some legit worry about the upcoming Devil May Cry series that drops in literally just a few months? Because, uh, dude, th th this this is getting out of hand, but it's also so hilarious to see the absolute backpedal from these outlets. And you know what? Hey, if this was bad, if you didn't like this, and you're, you're a Tomb Raider fan, I'm really, really sorry for you. But don't forget, we got the Phoebe Waller Bridge live action version from Amazon coming real soon, so maybe that'll be better. But that was just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments down below, or let me know on X, where you can find me at Bolt the Word, and please do subscribe. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about, you know, animation or video games, but anime, movies, music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon, and become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord, choose the articles I go over, choose the videos we react to on my Friday night live streams, and of course, get involved with over 130 other vital idols. We are a bright, beautiful, glowing, vibrant community that I cannot wait to grow even further, because we do care about diversity, but only one kind of diversity, diversity of thought. If that's interesting to you, join the Discord, hit subscribe, and until next time, it is all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.